My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we begin our journey in ordinary time for 2023. Yesterday, the Christmas season concluded liturgically with the celebration of the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. And this feast is always the hinge into ordinary time. Ordinary time being the, the rest, you know, the, the majority of the year when we contemplate the public ministry, both in action and in teaching of Jesus outside of those hinge seasons during Advent and Christmas, focusing on the, of course, around the nativity, uh, but also the, the hidden life, if you will, of Jesus. And then Lent and Easter, when we begin to celebrate the passion, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord in an intense way. And so everything in between those two hinges, we contemplate during the season of ordinary time. So it's most fitting that the Feast of the Baptism launches ordinary time as it ends Christmas, because from the moment Jesus is baptized, his public ministry begins. What was hidden is now made manifest, it is revealed. The voice of the Father has said, for those who heard, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Now everyone has to see exactly what this means. And so today in the Gospel of Mark, in our first Gospel passage of the year in ordinary time, we hear Jesus going to Capernaum and instantly people are in a tizzy because he teaches as one having authority. And we need to understand what exactly this means. Not just in the sense he speaks as someone powerful, but for, for the Jewish people in the Old Testament tradition, the law was given through Moses. And from the time the law was given, there were those that always had an authority, but the authority was always rooted in the Torah. And so, whether it was in terms of those anointed and the prophets would constantly call people back, but you had the constant unpacking, the interpreti interpretations of the law. When people would ask, well, how does the law apply to this situation? An interpretation was given. And in a sense, the law by the time of Jesus had expanded well beyond that which was directly given by Moses. There was a whole legal tradition. And this was the authority, spoken in the authority of God. And so if you came, even in a prophetic name, you referred back to that. Even at this time, the, the great Pharisees, the scribes, the, the rabbis would teach in the name of a past tradition. And Jesus comes and is not invoking or speaking in anyone's name, but his own name. Not only in his teaching, but his actions. He speaks as the one himself having authority, the authority that should only belong to God. Now for us, we know that it's because he's God. This is not realized yet. And so the demons instantly, as we hear, try to subvert this mission. Because the moment they begin to understand or think that they understand a divine connection as the, the Son of God, as we heard, this is my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased at the baptism, this has a messianic connotation, but they have a, still a different understanding of who the Messiah is. They don't understand the Messiah as literally God. They think of the terms of Son of God, of a favored one, anointed one of God coming forth to save them. And so when the demons point him out, in a sense, they're trying to limit the scope of Jesus to get the people to latch on instantly to a narrower messianic expectation, when in fact Jesus has come to do something much greater than any intention the people could have dreamed of. Not to just settle political scores, not just to get the land back, but truly to set his people free from bondage, to set right that which happened in the fall. Jesus has come to reconcile God's people to their Father in heaven. And so this truly sets forth the work of the Redeemer, but is also an important reminder for us that so often we seem disappointed in God's answer to our prayers or the way that he works in his providence, when in fact, God's plan is so much greater than anything we can dream of. Our expectations, our requests, are always more narrow than they should be. God's generosity surpasses our understanding, our imagination. And so, even though in our narrowness of mind and heart we don't understand, may we always keep in mind that Jesus Christ is working for our good and that it surpasses every expectation we could dream of. May God bless you all.